Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that Carrie Lake is not elected. So, does that include campaigning for Democrats if that's what it takes? Yes. It does. Okay, there we go. Have there been any Liz Cheney sightings in Arizona? Welcome back to Square Off. The soon-to-be former Republican congresswoman from Wyoming caused a stir last week with that pledge to campaign against Carrie Lake. Could it happen? That's one of the questions for our political insiders. Joining us are Stacey Pearson, co-founder of the Democratic consulting firm Lumen Strategies, and Marcus Del Artino, a former member of Senator John McCain's staff and a partner at First Strategic Communications and Public Affairs. Welcome back to Square Off. Topic one, we'll start with Arizona's abortion ban. I laid out the confusion surrounding the ban, the two laws actually in our last segment. How did the state end up with two laws? Stacey? Oh, it's mind-boggling. The first being written when it was unsettled science that doctors should wash their hands. I mean, this is... The just, 1864 ban. Right. The 1864 ban, we were still debating whether or not washing your hands was part of the medical procedure manual, how-to. Um, it, it, it's absurd that we're in this position. And, and, and women, regardless of political spectrum, are, are infuriated. It seems like the folks who put together the 15-week ban thought they were being pretty clever. And somehow this would mesh with a ban, a total ban that, that the Supreme Court might allow. I, I don't think that they thought they were being clever. I th think they thought they were fixing the problem. Um, and so, it, look, you know, the judge did what the judge was frankly supposed to do, which was to say, look, Roe has been pulled. And this was, my stay was put in place for that decision. That being said, Roe's gone, so here's where we are. Um, you know, I think probably... I, I don't think there's that much confusion, frankly, but I understand I'm in the minority. I think the 15-week ban stands, um, the bill from two years ago. And I think that that's pretty clear in the statute, but we're going to go through what lawyers do um, and have an exercise in the courtroom. And so there's a lot of talk about how important abortion will be in motivating voters. Does this confusion take the edge off that, or are voters going to do what oh, it's voters are going to do? Yeah, I think this actually is lighter. The confusion is lighter fluid on this issue. When, when, you, when a woman is going into her OB's office, there needs to be absolutely no confusion about what her options are. And so I think this is actually another log on the fire. It might be an undercovered, undercovered issue is what's going on in ERs and hospitals right now when they right. deal with women in crisis pregnancies uh, and what they can do. And there appears to be a lot of a big uh, unknown there. Let's move on to topic two, out-of-state visitors. There are reports that Donald Trump might campaign in Arizona in the next few weeks. And we just heard Liz Cheney pledging to campaign, it seems, for Katie Hobbs. Marcus, which one is more likely to show up and why? I definitely, for some reason, I think it's Donald Trump. Um, and he's, he's the master of waiting until the last minute, right? So you'll probably get maybe 72 hours notice before he, before he pops up. Uh, and conveniently, you also have something else on your calendar when that, when that happens. But I think he's shown a proclivity, proclivity to come to Arizona to help out Republican candidates, to motivate the base in, in Republican uh, counties, Yavapai, Mojave, uh, certainly Maricopa. And I, it, I will not be shocked if he flies in in the last week. What about Liz Cheney? Uh, that'll be an odd pairing, Liz Cheney and Katie Hobbs, and I'm not sure exactly what Liz Cheney would do, or maybe she might be fundraising, fundraising for Democrats. Could she play a role in tilting this election? Absolutely. What, what her existence in Arizona proves is that extremism has slid up above economy or abortion as primary issues. We're not talking about the Democrats' biggest vulnerability, which is gas prices, astounding housing costs, all of these inflation, all of these issues, we're, we're talking about extremism. And so her getting here and talking about that exact issue, radicalization and, and extremism, is great for Democrats. But it's the question's based on the idea that there's a large percentage of the population who hasn't made up their mind, right? Sure. And so Liz Cheney is somehow gonna make independents vote for Katie Hobbs. I contend that's not gonna happen. Um, and most voters already have their mind made up. So what, what's, what can you do? The Donald Trump model. Motivate your base to turn out, to get your, to the turnout game. You want as many Republicans to turn out. Liz Cheney, I don't think, has that motivating factor for Democrats to move turnout. But if you're a Republican right now, do you really want Donald Trump in town? I mean, listen, he motivates Republicans to turn out and vote. There's no doubt. Look at the crowds that he gets. 
Um, and, and certainly, I think, in rural Arizona, in these Yavapai bases in Mojave County, uh, those he motivates the people to go vote. Stacy, you scoff. You scoff. The biggest crowds, the greatest crowds, the largest crowds you've ever seen. I mean, this is the guy lost Arizona. So come on back. Let's do this again. But, but to Marcus's this point about Joe Biden, a Joe Biden. But what we've seen, it seems, from Republican candidates is it's all about the base. Right. Right. I've never seen them trying to get the base as revved up in an election as we're seeing it this year. I think it's part of a new strategy, which is, you know, let's grow the base instead of trying to sway these um, these uh, people, the independent voters in a general sense. Uh, instead of spending time and money let on them, let's recruit our base and grow it. Which, again, didn't work for Arpaio in 16 or McSally in 18 or 20. There's about 100 you know, different reasons on, yeah. on that, <laughs> on both of those candidates on those races that have little to do with the turnout. <laughs> All right, let's move to topic three, the field of candidates. We've watched two sets of statewide candidates side by side in televised debates. For Secretary of State, Democrat Adrian Fontes and Republican Mark Fincham and Attorney General, Republican Abe Hamada and Democrat Chris Mays. Let's listen to a bite from the AG's debate this past week. I think it's dangerous territory. If a Democratic legislature passed a law, I am bound to uphold that law as Attorney General. But my opponent wants to pick and choose depending on her personal beliefs. I think that's very dangerous territory that we're walking in. Well, this is absurd. You have said that you would have decertified the 2020 election and that you would not have certified the 2020 election. I mean, for you to sit here and say that I'm picking and choosing laws is ridiculous. That was just some of the verbal jousting between Chris Mays and Abe Hamadat. I'll start with you, Stacey. What did we learn about the candidates in these two debates? Oh, that extremism's on full display. I mean, we had very moderate Democrats debating about the 2020 election. I mean, it was just nonsense. I mean, it, it's over. They have to move on. And I think what we did, to Marcus's point, is just help people feel more comfortable in their decision to vote a top-ticket blue streak all the way down. It felt like, uh, I have to say, though, it felt watching Mark Fincham in the Secretary of State debate and even Abe Hamada in the AG's debate, they're sort of, tr they're trying to really shade their position. They weren't full-on election deniers. They were trying to get it, saying it, say it without saying it. I think, and I'm not too sure that was my point, but anyway, um, moving on to this, <laughs> was, was uh, I, I think they're, tr they're, you know, they're pivoting. There's no doubt about it, and I think uh, I think it's a lesson for all candidates of what you say in the primary. In today's day and age, with everybody having a cell phone with a camera on them, is going to come back, um, and so you're going to have to justify some of these positions. You know, I want to arrest people. Well, you know, how are you going to handle that? And frankly, all of these decisions have financial consequences for the taxpayers. I mean, you make the wrong arrest, and there's a lawsuit. Taxpayers, I hate to break it to you, but you get to pick up the cost of that. Got to end it there, Stacey Pearson, Marcus Del Artino. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you.